you think about uh, you know tech, plate tectonics and you have two plates that are moving apart, um, when in a scenario where they're moving apart very rapidly, like for example uh, in the Pacific, um, that's like a Ferrari, you know. It's a well lubricated machine. You make new crust. You move it sideways. The whole thing is going fast. There's a lot of magma around. Uh, there's not very much seismic activity. There's not very much earthquakes because you're really just making a hole and filling it with new earth. You know, volcanically created earth, moving it sideways, repeat as necessary. Um, whereas when you really slow it down, uh, it's more like a chitty chitty bang bang. You know, where you have piston rod flying out over here, the whole thing's kind of breaking down. It's not running smooth, it's herky-jerky, you know, um, and that would be the Gackle Ridge. It's the chitty-chitty bang-bang of mid-ocean ridges. The 2001, the Amori Cruise was motivated by, um, well, petrology, the study of the rocks themselves. Uh, and so, almost as an afterthought, they put some sensors that would measure the temperature of the water, that would measure the clarity of the water. In the deep ocean, you know, the water is cold and clear, you know, it's cold, clear water. But if you have a hydrothermal venting, uh, you know, black smoker venting uh, in the water column, it discharges hot uh, water that's full of metals. To everyone's complete shock, almost every single time, that they lowered the wire down into the water, started dredging rocks, they found evidence for these hydrothermal plumes. And this was really stunning because the basic theory said that when you have really fast spreading plates, you have all this volcanic activity, then you're going to get a lot of hydrothermal circulation. And so if, if you don't have this volcanic activity, you ought not to have hydrothermal circulation or, or not so much. And so this was you know, just unbelievable. No, nobody really knew quite what, what to make of it. The uh, Gackle Ridge, um, the, the tectonic plates are moving apart, but only kind of just. They're just barely moving apart. And so if you move the two tectonic plates apart rapidly, you get a lot of volcanism. It's very spectacular. But you get a rock type called basalt, and it's pretty vanilla as far as rocks go. And, but when you slow that process down, and so that you get to where you're kind of just barely opening apart, rather than uh, having all this volcanic activity, instead it's like grave robbing. You're just exhuming these big slabs of primordial mantle material, okay? So you get a completely different kind of rock. There's a really big difference between basalt and, and peridotite is the name of the material, of the mantle material. You know, from the fossil record, it looks like the earliest life was, you know, three and a half billion years ago. So the earliest life evolved in an oxygen-free environment, a place where it couldn't use oxygen to metabolize and, and create energy. Uh, so it had to use something else. What did it have to, what did it probably use? It probably used sulfur. And so what's interesting about these peridotite hosted hydrothermal systems is that they create this free sulfur that basically simulates the kind of conditions that would have existed as life was first um, emerging uh, on Earth. When the hydrothermal fluids interact with seawater, they deposit you know, all these minerals, including copper, zinc, gold, sulfur, and all this kind of stuff, a lot of metals. And when that circulation is happening at slow spreading ridges, of which the gackle is the ultimate example of, you build very large ore deposits. And so that's kind of exciting uh, because it could be that there is, you know, the could, there could be a lot of really large ore deposits on the seafloor of the Gackle Ridge. This podcast was produced by the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution with funding from the National Science Foundation. For more information, visit us on the web at polar Discovery dot whoi dot edu